these hikes at 3 a.m. definitely take their toll. So it's a rare, very calm morning out here at Hama Bay. We've got the Milky Way low on the horizon right now. Just gonna set up a time lapse uh, to capture the Milky Way this morning. But the main reason I wanted to come out today is to do my first ever trial with tracking. So we brought out the tracker, we got everything set up, hopefully it'll work out. Uh, clouds are relatively clear, so I don't think I should have too much problems with cloud coverage, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, we'll see how much better the Milky Way looks after we blend some tracked images with the foreground. But for now, we're gonna set up this time lapse and then I'll walk you through the steps that I'm gonna take when using my tracker. For the time lapse, we're gonna use the A7 IV with the 14 GM. Get nice and ultra wide here and hopefully get some good shots. So one of the first things that I wanna do for tracking is I wanna make sure that I have a tripod with a leveling base so I can get my horizon and my tracker and my camera nice and level to the horizon. Without a level tripod, the whole idea of tracking the night sky, it kind of gets thrown off because you have to align everything to the axes of the earth. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to get a leveling based tripod like this iFootage TC7 and a panoramic head with a leveling base. And then we just, I'm gonna have to turn on the light briefly for a little bit here. Just get the tripod nice and level, lock it in there. And now we don't move it for the duration of this <laughs> Milky Way rise. <laughs> so the tracker that I'm gonna be using today is this small little guy from um, Move Shoot Move. This is their newest tracker called the Nomad. It has a nice little quick release plate for Arca Swiss plates and you just line it up like that. And then you can either get a astroscope or I opted to get the, the laser pointer to align it with the North Star. So have it set up like this. We take the laser pointer, unscrew the cap, screw this guy in to the tracker. I think I'm gonna have to kind of turn this guy around a little bit here. Yeah, flip it over. <laughs> And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the clouds to clear a little bit, wait till I can see the North Star, align this guy with the North Star. So with our laser pointer, we're gonna find Polaris and the easiest way to find Polaris is to just look for the Big Dipper and draw a straight line towards the North Star. Usually I get a nice ballpark idea with photo pills. It shows me where it is. I look around for the Dipper. Once I see the Dipper, I know exactly what star I'm pointing to. So, so yeah, we're gonna try and line this up as best as we can with the North Star. Once I have it relatively aligned, I'm gonna to wanna to turn the tracker on and I'm gonna flip it into Northern Hemisphere mode. So now at this point, if we aligned it properly, we might have to make some fine adjustments in a second if we didn't align it properly. But the idea is if we aligned it properly, now the tracker is rotating at the desired speed of the earth. So now all I have to do is get my V mount plate here. I don't know if you guys can see here, but tracker that's rotating L mount plate, ball head, laser pointer to align. And of course, all of this is level with the ball head. Let's take a few test shots and see how it goes. So our tracker is working quite well. I was able to get a minute exposure, no star trailing. It looks pretty aligned. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything better. So I'm just trying to see how 
far I can push the exposure because I kind of want go-to settings. I want to have settings that I, I go to when I want to get a tracked shot of the Milky Way. It's actually perfect right now because the skies are totally and completely clear. So I can't ask for any better conditions than right at this moment. But um, what the plan is to just try to find how long we can push the shutter speed before we get any star trailing before that um, you know alignment with the laser comes into play and kind of throws it off a little bit. But as of right now, it's looking really, really good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blend that tracked shot of the Milky Way with foreground. So we'll blend those two shots and hopefully it'll come out okay. see from this three minute exposure there is a little bit of star trailing so just to be safe I opted to use two minute exposures as my upper limit on this shoot. time for the sun to rise. Just a couple of thoughts on my first tracking experience. The whole point of tracking is to get a more detailed shot of the Milky Way core where you're not shooting as high up an ISO. You can bring that ISO down, you can extend your exposure to get like a nice uh, one minute, two minute exposure of the Milky Way and get all that detail. Basically you're just trying to get a better shot of the Milky Way. And the idea is already that you're going to be blending your images in post, which is usually what we do um, to a certain extent with most of our Milky Ways anyways. The issue that I have with tracking, at least here on Oahu and at least for this particular shoot, because I'm extending my shutter speed to like two minutes, one minute, that really allows the clouds a lot of time to come into the frame, take away the Milky Way. Whereas if I'm shooting at something more like four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, there's less chance that the cloud is gonna cross the frame. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, when you're, if you are gonna get into tracking, if you live in a pretty cloudy area or you know, pretty variable area like Oahu, maybe tracking might not be worth it for you. Maybe just stick to kind of single exposure type of uh, Milky Way shots just so you can time your shots with the clear skies. But um, I'm excited to take this tracker over to Big Island where I think I'm gonna get a better chance of having a totally clear sky. We have a trip coming up to the Big Island, so we'll see how much easier it is when we have no light pollution and little cloud cover. All right, so as you can see now, the sun has risen up to kind of uh, overpower our Milky Way a little bit. So we put the tracker away, um, but yeah, it's a fairly good first attempt at tracking. I really like how small portable this little guy is. So yeah, if you're looking into getting into tracking, this uh, tracker, the Nomad Tracker by Mooshoot Move is a pretty good option if you'd like to keep things small and lightweight. Uh, you can get good around, in my case today, I got two minute exposures, but I'm sure if you're aligning a little bit better than I could today, then you could go for longer exposures. But yeah, that's just my quick little introduction to tracking. It's my first time tracking and, you know, you're recording this and, you know, we're kind of learning on the fly as well as teaching you guys on the fly as well. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you got a little bit of tips and tricks for tracking. Hopefully we can get even some better track shots on our next upcoming trip.
But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, comment below, subscribe if you aren't ready. And we'll see you guys in the next astrophotography adventure. Peace out, guys. Thank <laughs> you.